Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm essentially going to share with you the first setups that I like to do with my Kali Linux. Okay. So the first thing that I like to do is just add this root terminal to the desktop. Uh, you can also do Control Shift Alt T, I believe, as well. You can open it like that. But if you just want convenience, you can just double click like so. And when you're running things in root, just be mindful that you aren't exposing it to the internet or uh, really in general, be very careful if you're going to expose something to the internet. But if you haven't done an import forwarding or anything like that, it's not that big of a risk, especially if it's on its own network, DVM. But yeah, anyway, the first change that I like to do in my terminal, at least, is just to go to preferences. Then I like to change it from whatever the default is. And I like to set mine at Linux. It's just for different color schemes, right? So if you go to preferences and then we go to Linux like so, and we apply. <coughs> it's already different, but that's kind of how I like it. And then I typically increase the font to something like 17. And then just so it's easier to see, right? And another thing that I like to do as well is to set this show a border. So pay attention to the border. And then now you can't really see it. Now you can see it. It's mainly so that if I want to do something like Control Shift D to split the terminal, the first time this happens, it looks a bit scuffed, but if we do Control D, Control Shift D again, you see that now it, you know, it changes. You can also use Alt key with an up and down arrows to do it like so. But yeah, it's very, it's very convenient. Um, so yeah, those are some defaults I like to do. Now I will also just do like an app to update and then maybe a app to update or upgrade. If I can time, like so. This is also a pretty good idea to just do immediately when you have uh, started a, uh, a VM. Another thing as well, if you're using VirtualBox, which, uh, which I am, is to essentially go to devices and then make sure that drag and drop and shared clipboard are set to bi-directional. It's mainly just so that when you're trying to copy things from a different, like this is a, this is a copy from a host in a different screen and it works. Uh, to copy over, right? And that's just very important. Hmm, what else? There are some general things that I like to get as well. But this is just per preference, right? I would say this is the most important part. Uh, I just tend to like G-Edit. It's just the basic... Uh, it's very similar to mouse pen. That... Uh, you can just... Uh, just a text editor. It's just a preference of mine. Some other things as well uh, that you definitely would need is something like... Stack list. It's just an amazing uh, word list that you would definitely be advised to use for something like the OSP, etc. Um, so this is how Gedit looks like by default. But uh, I typically go to preferences and then go to fonts and colors, theme variant. Uh, let's see, dark style, and then I think Oblivion. Yeah, it's usually, usually what I do. It's mainly just because I'm used to it, and uh, yeah. So that's uh, typically what I like to do for a uh, text editor. And again, we install something like Cyclist, uh, do an app to update and up upgrade. Um, we would obviously need something like, uh, like Burp Suite. <laughs> if you just look up uh, Burp Suite on TryHackMe, there's a very easy setup guide there. So I won't show it in this video because it takes a bit of time. Not much, but yeah, just a little bit. Um, let's see. Another quick thing as well is uh, Rocky. Mm. So you would definitely uh, like to compress this one. So I think it's gsep-d uh, for decompress. That looks correct. So if I try that again, you can see that now it doesn't exist. It's only the TXT. So these are definitely like some immediate changes that I would do. Um, I would also highly recommend that you take a snapshot after you have done this. Um, right, so pretty much just taking your snapshot right here when you're done. I typically do mine when it's power powered off, but that's just a small preference thing. There are some other things as well that I will also do. Um, there are some uh, browser extensions that is very handy to have. One of them is uh, Fox, the proxy. 
another one is hack tools and another one is vapalizer uh, these I would pretty much always get uh, if this will open Change this to English. And let's go back here. So yeah, Foxy Proxy. Mm, we would definitely always get. This is just how we can work with uh, Burp Suite and uh, other things like uh, proxy chains, etc. It's very handy to have. So, pin the toolbar. The first thing that I would like to do is just to manage uh, extension. Uh, no, sorry. Go here and then go to Options. <laughs> Proxies, you would add a proxy. Burp suite, you would use a HTTP type. I would just call mine burp. And then host name is going to be the local host, the loopback address. Port is going to be 8080. That's the default port that burp resides on. And the rest is perfectly fine. So if you save this, now you can toggle on and off. Uh, if you want your browser to essentially proxy through this, uh, this port on local host, so like 8080. So if you have burp running, then you will essentially route the traffic into burp. Um, so yeah, you can inspect and modify web traffic. Mm. I guess I might as well just show quickly how to set up burp if you're not uh, familiar. So let's see. Uh, open up burp and then let me just copy that address right there. And then another obvious thing is that you would obviously like to have your tools farmer, right? So, um, so typically what I do, I haven't set it up yet on this uh, VM because it's brand new because I wanted to show you guys this. I typically like uh, add my tools somewhere like in app tools and I haven't made it yet as you can see. And then maybe on the tools I would have like Privesk, uh, Privesk, etc. Mm. So you can just do make there dash p to make uh, several ones so yeah there we go so don't show this again uh, so you could also change the user interface display i would definitely <laughs> like to have mine dark and then we can increase the font a little bit yeah, so that's one of the things I would do. And so yeah, if we go back to our uh, our browser and then we change the burp, now if we go to this address, we will actually get the certificate of burp. And then the next thing we want to do then is to go to settings and a privacy and security. And then we want to scroll down a bit. And there we go, into certificates. Um, so we can go to authorities and import, and then right there we can see we can import the certificate that we just got. Do you want port figure C8 for the following purposes? Yes, we wanted to be able to identify websites and we don't need the emails and users. Hit OK, OK, and what you'll be able to see now, if we look at the HTTP proxy tab, it doesn't tell us much. If we then go to google.com, we go back, <coughs> we will now see that Burp Suite is instantly populating, right? So, so that's awesome. Um, and yeah, and then as I said as well, mm, <coughs> Hack Tools is another, uh, I don't think it's quite this one. Yeah, it's this one, I think. It's at least a hack tools. It's very handy. It just has a bunch of... Uh... Yes, exactly. It just has a bunch of convenient things like basic uh, one-liners for shells. Uh, it has some stuff for like SQL injection. And it basically just has a lot of convenient commands at, uh, at your disposal. So for instance, like... 
if you want to create like a T2Y, uh, fully interactive show, then it just kind of like has the commands and it's just, it's just like a nice tool to have, right? So it reminds me quite about uh, uh, this site, which again has a lot of different one liners. So very good. What did it very convenient to have? So if you didn't uh, know of this one, I recommend it. And another one that I highly recommend as well is uh, is a weaponizer. Essentially, what this tool is is that it's a fingerprinting tool. Um, so uh, yeah, if you have this running and you come across different websites, you can basically just click this extension, and it will quickly just show you what. Uh, Technology it believes that the site is running based on some fingerprint checks. So, um, okay, and so if you go to um, There we go. Now it's starting to populate. So, based on the site, it will see different uh, technologies, right? So, I guess we can go to YouTube. And then the uh, same applies, but it can be very, very useful uh, because you will typically see that, like, okay, this site is running WordPress, this site is based off of PHP, etc. It's just very, very useful. And another very important one that I attempt to get is just Dark Reader. It's basically just to allow sites that otherwise would not be dark, you can convert it into dark, right? It's more so just a preference for my eyes than anything else, but I figured I should mention it. Um, so yeah, that's that's the basics of what I would do. And as well as I mentioned as well, that uh, I would of course populate this with more tools as I go over time and uh, and yeah, after I'm essentially done with this, I would just shut this off. And then I would just go to the VM and just have after basic setup. And then there we have it. So there is a nice and convenient uh, snapshot so that if I fuck up this VM, I can just go back to that and yeah. Really hope this video was helpful and maybe you learned something or uh, just, yeah. If anything was useful, I really hope that uh, this video was awesome. And uh, if you actually would like to learn how to pass the OCP and learn hacking from me and you want access to all of my notes and uh, all of the resources that we have, then you should definitely check out the links uh, in the description because we have a lot to teach. And yeah, I really hope that I can help uh, you accelerate your learning path to either getting into cybersecurity or ethical hacking, but yeah. I hope this video was helpful and have an awesome day. Now, if you enjoy how I teach and you enjoy this video and you want to take the OCP, then what are you doing not being in this course? It's over 15 hours long and it covers everything that you need. If you're only watching the videos on YouTube, you're missing out a lot because it's over 15 hours of content. You will get access to the VIP section on Discord where you can ask me any questions and you can study alongside all the other students in our course right now. You will also get access to this checklist right here, which will cover at least 95% plus of all the attacks and all the techniques that you need to know for every single section. Not only initial access, but AD, pivoting, Linux, and Windows privilege escalation. And the goal for you is to reach proficient or at least basic competence on all of them. That's one of the things. We also have this entire roadmap right here, where there's a bunch of action steps and a bunch of cheat sheets inside all of these hyperlinks that I can't show you in this video. But once you have completed all of them, you know for a fact that you will be ready to get into the OCP exams and absolutely crush it. If that sounds interesting to you, to get all of this in 15 hour plus of <laughs> video footage from someone who has OCP, who explains different attacks and techniques and methodologies, it's gonna be invaluable to you. Now, some people are confused with the offer. If you're interested in the notes, these are the notes that you will constantly see me use in the videos, right? They're pretty much recommended to go hand in hand with the course, and I use them constantly in the course itself, right? So I think you'll find it extremely useful. That's also why we have the third offer, which is the bundle, 
where you can buy both of these together for a discount. I hope that clarifies things. Best of luck on your OCP journey. I really hope this will be massively useful to you. I'll see you in the next video.